more questions. Questions are honorable chef de l'opposition. The honorable leader of the opposition. The common sense conservatives have a plan to cut taxes, build the homes, fix the budget, stop the crime. However, the prime, the costly prime minister, with the support of the Bloc Québécois, is inflating inflation with taxes and deficits. That and the prime minister wants even greater tax hikes on the 1st of April. Will the prime minister inverse his inflationary policies, or are we going to have to defeat him with a no-confidence vote and an election on taxes? The right honorable prime minister. The carbon remittance puts more money in the pockets of eight out of 10 families under federal jurisdiction. We give more families to families whilst fighting against climate change, Mr. Speaker. That's what the vast majority of Canadians want. Unfortunately, however, the Conservatives, uh, Conservative politicians, don't want to help affordability. They don't want to help fighting climate change. Luckily, the majority in this House wants to fight against climate change and give more money to Canadians, and that is what we are trying to do. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. That's quite the opposite compared to what the parliamentary budget officer said on the 18th of March, of March, he said, when we consider the economic impacts of the carbon tax, most families will pay more and be negatively impacted by the carbon tax. So what the prime minister said is simply not true. Canadians will pay more than what they receive. And there's a second carbon tax that is directly applicable on the on the backs of Quebecers. So will the Bloc Québécois vote for Quebec families, or will they vote again for their real boss, the Prime Minister of the Federal Government of Canada? The right honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, if the Leader of the Opposition stopped talking and started listening to Canadians, he would understand that Canadians know that the cost of inaction with regards to climate change are huge. Forest fires, floodings, droughts, that cost a lot to our farmers and producers, our fishers. This is a reality, and we are fighting against this on this side of the House, whilst putting more money in the pockets of eight out of ten families throughout the country. The carbon remittance delivers for Canadian families, and the Conservative Party wants to take it away from Canadian families. Then I have chef de l'opposition. While common sense Conservatives will axe the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, and stop the crime, this Prime Minister is not worth the cost, with the Parliamentary Budget Officer testifying again that the majority of households will see a negative impact as a result of the carbon tax. End quote. Now he wants to hike the, the tax on April Fool's Day. We won't stand for it. So what will it be with this Prime Minister? Will he spike the hike or will he face a non-confidence vote at a carbon tax election? Yeah. Le Sorry, the Right Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, the Parliamentary Budget Officer's report lays out clearly that eight out of ten Canadian families right. across the country where the price on pollution applies get more money back every year. That's how we put more money in the pockets of Canadians while having one of the strongest plans to fight climate change around the world. That's what the Conservative Party is standing against right now. Money in the pockets of Canadian families and a real plan to fight climate change that is working, Mr. Speaker, that is bringing down emissions, that is making us more competitive, that is helping build the future. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Speaker, I'm going to read again the testimony from the March 18th appearance of the Parliamentary Budget Officer. Once you factor in the rebate but also the economic impacts, the majority, the majority of households will see a negative impact as a result of the carbon tax. End quote. The Prime Minister plans to make this problem worse with a carbon tax hike on heat, on homes, on fuel, on food. We will not stand for it. So once again, which will it be? Will he spike the hike or will we have a carbon tax election? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. What will it be, Mr. Speaker? It will be that Canadians get more money That's with right. the Canada carbon rebate. Right. 80 percent of Canadian households uh, in areas where the federal carbon tax applies get more money. Every year.
here from the Canada carbon rebate than they pay in the price on pollution. On top of that, we are fighting climate change, making our industries more competitive and preparing a better future. There is no plan on the Conservative side of the House to either help Canadians with rebate checks or fight climate change. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Speaker, not only did the Parliamentary Budget Officer testify that the majority of households will pay more in carbon taxes than they will get back in rebates, he, there is a table showing that every single province in which this tax applies, the middle class families pay vastly more than they get back, and Canadians know it, because under this Prime Minister, they've seen their food, their fuel, their homes, their heating go through the roof. But why why don't we just end the debate and let Canadians decide and have a carbon tax election? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker. The Parliamentary Budget Officer clearly spelled out that 8 out of 10 Canadian families in areas where the price on pollution applies get more money back every year. That's because we created a plan that not only is one of the strongest plans to fight climate change in the world, but it puts more money back in the pockets of middle-class Canadians as we build a stronger future, better careers, more competitiveness, and a safer environment for generations to come. That's the plan we have. That's not what they're doing. The Honourable Member for Belleau Chambly. Yesterday, the Prime Minister told a great joke. He said how well he collaborates with the Premier of Quebec. However, the facts show that everyone in the National Assembly of Quebec, except the Liberals, are asking that Quebec have full powers with regards to immigration. The Prime Minister of Canada has refused an essential request from Quebec. Is that how he sees Canada's friendship with Quebec? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, my Honourable colleague knows full well that Quebec has more powers in immigration than any other province. And he knows full well that I spoke last Friday with Premier Legault to say, yes, let us work together to reach our objectives, our common objectives. We are here to help companies. We are here to make sure that services are available. We are here to help with housing. We will work hand in hand with Quebec, as we have always done. We are here to deliver for Quebecers and all Canadians all together. The Honourable Member for belle chambly if the Prime Minister is here to deliver for Quebecers, well, it's just another failure on his part. The f government of Quebec has paid for education, for health care, for income supplements, and uh, child care. The Liberal government said, yes, pay up front and we'll reimburse you later. The bill is up to $1 billion, and now... Quebec has a huge deficit because of this, and now the federal government is saying, deal with it, because I'm not going to give you my $1 billion. You're my friend, but go right on, go right on home. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. I would be very careful if I was the leader of the bloc, because he seems to think that there are more Quebecers on his side of the house than ours. We speak on behalf of Quebecers, we represent Quebecers, and we're here to work hand in hand to deliver results for Quebecers. With regards to health, we are working very hard to make sure that there are improvements in healthcare services. The federal government is here to disburse billions upon billions of dollars for Quebec priorities. We are here to work together and will continue to do so throughout this house as Quebecers.
The Honourable Member from Edmonton Greasebaugh. First Nations, Métis and Inuit communities across Canada are slipping further behind. Kids can't access health services and homes are falling apart. But what are the Liberals doing? Threatening to cut billions in services communities rely on. And if we're up to the Conservative leader, Indigenous services would be gutted all together. The Liberals and Conservatives seem to always find ways to make rich CEOs even richer, but never find money for real people. Will the Prime Minister honour his commitments to Indigenous people? People or leave them out to dry. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, we are unequivocally committed and have been since 2015 to working in partnership with First Nations, Inuit and Métis communities across the country to advance self-determination and reconciliation. We have tripled investments in Indigenous housing, mental health, access to clean drinking water and jobs to contribute to economic reconciliation. We also move forward to compensate First Nations children and families who suffered under the discriminatory child welfare system. We've built over 30,000 homes since 2016, and we recently announced that we will move forward in creating an Indigenous loan support program. There is, of course, much more to do, but we will keep doing it. The Honourable Member from Edmonton, Griesbach. Mr. Speaker, that answer is little comfort to the residential school survivors and children who rely on those services. Imagine having to live in a moldy home with your young children knowing that it isn't a healthy place for them. That's the heartbreaking situation First Nations are facing across the country. The Auditor General says herself that this government has no plan to close the housing gaps, that they're keeping First Nations in inhumane conditions. Shame. 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 When will the Prime Minister take First Nations housing seriously and provide the communities with the resources they desperately need. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. We have made historic investments in housing in Indigenous communities after decades of wrongful underfunding by previous governments of all stripes. And we are working every single day to do more. We're committed to working in partnership with First Nations and their communities. We thank the Auditor General for her work and her report, and we'll continue to move forward to do even more in partnership with Indigenous people across this country. Then I have chef. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. ...parties, there's been an outbreak of common sense yeah. on the carbon tax. In fact, Nova Scotia Liberals, NDPers and Conservatives passed a unanimous motion in their legislature this week calling on their federal MPs to vote against the Prime Minister's 23% carbon tax hike. No wonder. The cost of the carbon tax to the average Nova Scotia family will be $1,605, according to the Parliamentary Budget Officer. $1,605. How much will be the rebate for the average family? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, the federal price on pollution is a backstop. It's a system that we put in place to both fight climate change everywhere across the country and put more money back in the pockets of Canadian families where it applies. Every single province had and continues to have the option to replace the federal price on pollution with their own program as long as it is as rigorous and stringent as the federal uh, price on pollution. As long as they have a plan to fight climate change, they can do what they want as long as it's strong enough. That's the options the provinces have. So they can take that option. We're going to keep putting money. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. That's demonstrably false because Nova Scotia actually has a climate change plan, which he rejected and overrode with a federal carbon tax that is opposed by New Democrats, Liberals and Conservatives unanimously in the province's legislature. But you notice he wouldn't answer my question. He's been bragging about these rebates. But then when we talk about the cost, all of a sudden he forgets the rebates. So yeah. I'm going to give him a second chance. In the province of Nova Scotia, the cost to the average family will be $1,500. $1,500. $1,500 per Nova Scotia family. How much is the rebate? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, that is simply not true. The reality is, for 8 out of 10 families right across the country in backstop provinces, families do better off 
off with the Canada carbon rebate than they do with uh, the extra costs of the price on pollution. This is a plan to fight climate change, but it's also a plan to put more money in the pockets of families from coast to coast to coast. Now, the Conservative leader doesn't care about fighting against climate change, and he doesn't care about affordability either, because he would rip up the rebate checks uh, and he would do less on fighting climate change. We're going to keep delivering for Canadians. Here, here. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. He still won't answer the question. All the Liberal ministers came in with little cue cards a week ago with all these rebates on them. They were waving them around, very proud. Yep. And then when we went to the Parliamentary Budget Officer and said, give us the full price by province, and we quoted that, for example, in Nova Scotia, it's $1,500 in cost to the average family, according to the PBO. Again, $1,500 in costs. What is the rebate? The number. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, we see the lengths to which uh, the Conservative Party will go to mislead Canadians about a plan that fights climate change and puts more money in the pockets out of eight or ten Canadian families. The Parliamentary Budget Officer himself admitted and said that you cannot take his words out of context because he did not calculate the costs of inaction on fighting climate change. He did not calculate the competitive advantages of the innovation and the solutions and the economic exactly. growth that comes with putting a price on pollution. The Conservative Party are not telling the full story. Exactly. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, he did not, the Parliamentary Budget Officer did not include the cost of climate change because the carbon tax doesn't address the cost of climate change. The Parliamentary Budget Officer made clear the carbon tax will do nothing to change the cost of climate change, and that's why it costs, the tax costs more for every family in every province. So let's go to Alberta, where the uh, per, two of the NDP leadership camp candidates have come out against the carbon tax, and the Prime Minister's only friend in the province, Nahid Nenshi, has gone on totally silent. Albertans will pay $2,900 in carbon tax per family. What will be the rebate for them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, $1,800 a year is the average, uh, is the family of four in Alberta, uh, the carbon re Canada carbon rebate. That is helping them, and according to an analysis by the Parliamentary Budget Officer, is more than they pay in extra price on pollution because of the price we put into the federal level. The price on pollution puts more money in the pockets out of 8 of 10 Canadian families and fights climate change while building a stronger, more competitive future. The Conservatives have no plan to fight climate change and no plan to help Canadians with rebate checks. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. All right, he found his cue card. Yeah. And he finally talked about the rebate. So he says the average family in Alberta will get $1,800 while they pay $2,943. Oh. In other words, next year alone, after this forthcoming hike, the average Alberta family will pay $1,100 more in carbon taxes than he gives back in his phony checks. Will the Prime Minister tell us if he understands that $2,900 is bigger than $1,800? <laughs> the Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, how about a different stat? A stat that the Prime, the Prime Minister, the, the Finance Minister, ministry analyzed turns out that for an average income quintile group, the average household of 2.5 Canadians, average net benefit per household in Alberta, $723 a year. Wow. That's $723 in the pockets of the average Albertan family because we put a price on pollution that puts more money back in the pockets out of 8 out of 10 Canadian families. That is what we are doing. That's how we fight climate change. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. He wants you to know, Mr. Speaker, he has alternative facts. <laughs> I get mine from the parliamentary officer that reports directly to Parliament and is independent. He's reporting, he's using numbers that come from officials that report to him and depend on him for their job. So let's take another province, Ontario, where the Liberal Leader 
has now come out against this Prime Minister's carbon tax. Maybe she knows that the average cost to an Ontario family of the federal carbon tax is $1,674 for this coming year. How much is the rebate in Ontario? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. The average net benefit per household in Ontario is $255 a year. Wow. That is fighting, cli fighting climate change while putting more money in the pockets of Canadians. The parliamentary budget officer himself demonstrated that 8 out of 10 Canadian families in regions that get the carbon price backstop do better with the price on pollution put more money back in their pockets than it costs them on the fight for climate change. This is the plan we're delivering for Canadians. That's the plan he wants to scrap. The Honourable Member for Belleau Chambly. Mr. Speaker, I don't really believe in polls, so let's not stop, our, stop talking about polls. But at the end of the day, the Prime Minister should realise that he's he needs to realise who speaks for who. In all polls, for the longest time, the bloc has always been ahead the Liberal, of the Liberals. If the Prime Minister is so low in the polls, so low that even the Conservatives are in front of them in Canada, it's perhaps because they don't respect Quebec, Quebecers, or the National Assembly of Quebec. Does he believe that this strategy is good because he knows that he is never going to gain any more in uh, Quebec, or does he just do it because harming Quebec is a good look for the rest of Canada? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Canadians know full well that in democracy there is one poll that counts, and that's the el actual election day. Over the past three elections, the Liberal Party has garnered more seats in Quebec than the Bloc Québécois because we are here to actually deliver tangible results for Quebecers and all Canadians with health agreements, with dental health, for health for seniors, with $6 billion for child care in Quebec, with investments that help to create economic growth jobs for the future for Quebecers, and a greener world for all. These are the investments we do to represent Quebec and will continue to deliver, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Bailo chambly I think that there's a bit of vulnerability coming through. The Liberals don't know if they'll be sat on their side or the other side after the next elections. If they really want to listen to Quebecers, if they really want to pretend they're listening to Quebecers, they will give more immigration powers to uh, Quebec. They will invest more in Quebec health care. At the moment, they're doing nothing, and all they do is read the pre-prepared cards. Will the Prime Minister finally at least pretend to do his job for Quebecers? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Let's talk about tangible facts, Mr. Speaker. 1.5 million Canadians and seniors have now registered to our dental plan dental plans against which the Conservatives voted, by the way. Over a third of these seniors are from Quebec. That's hundreds of thousands of senior Quebecers who will finally get dental care for free thanks to the federal government's investments in health care. We are here to deliver for Quebecers. We'll always be here for Quebecers and all Canadians. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Now the legislature in Newfoundland and Labrador has acknowledged that this Prime Minister is not worth the cost after eight years. They passed a motion supported by the Liberal Premier and personal friend of the Prime Minister to oppose the April 1st tax hike. They must have heard from the Parliamentary op Budget Officer that the cost to Newfoundlanders of the carbon tax this year will be $1,874, $1,874, $1,874 for the average Newfoundland and Labrador family. What will their rebate be? Yeah. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, the average net benefit per household in Newfoundland and Labrador is $303 a year. That's the money that they pocket uh, with our price on pollution and the Canada carbon rebate checks uh, that go into households across the province. The province 
is open to creating its own price on pollution, its own plan to fight climate change. As long as it's as strong as the federal backstop, they're welcome to do that if they want to do it a different way. But for the meantime, we're going to both fight climate change and deliver more money to the families in Newfoundland and Labrador. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. So here are the facts from the Parliamentary Budget Officer. They're directly from him. The, the cost to the average Newfoundland family is $1,874. The rebate is $1,497 for a net cost of $377. A net cost, a net loss of $377 and growing. These are the facts. Prime Minister, the Prime Minister stop denying the facts and if he really wants to contest and argue that he should be able to raise the tax, why doesn't he have the courage to call an election and let Canadians decide? Yeah. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. We are busy delivering for Canadians a, a, a price on pollution that puts more money in the pockets out of eight out of ten families across the country. And an election on the price on pollution? We had three, Mr. Speaker, and we won them all. One more. Wow. wow. Then he shouldn't be afraid to have one more. sent 2 million people lining up at food banks, 8,000 joining a Facebook group learning how they can eat a meal out of a dumpster, and now his best solution is to hike the tax on their heats, on their homes, on their fuel, on their food. If he really believes in it, why doesn't he call a carbon tax election now? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. We've heard time and time again over these past many months uh, the Leader of the Opposition talk about how Canada is broken. Well, Mr. Speaker, we are focused on supporting Canadians with things like child care and dental care and a plan to fight climate change that puts more money in the pockets out of eight of ten Canadian families right across the country. That is the approach that is delivering for Canadians, and we've still got more work to do, and we're going to continue keep doing it to deliver for Canadians every single day we're in this house. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, the, uh, yesterday the Finance Minister claimed that the carbon tax was revenue neutral, that it gave back, <laughs> that, that it, the government didn't keep a single penny. Well, it turns out they keep hundreds of billions of pennies. They're coll they've collected so far $20.7 billion and only paid back 18.6 billion. In other words, they profited by over two billion dollars by pillaging the pockets of Canadians. When will the Canadian people get their two billion dollars back? And if he's so sure, sure, sure about taking it away, why doesn't he call an election to defend it? Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, the the Conservative leader is now complaining about two billion dollars that he would never give to Canadian businesses. Would never give to Canadians because he would scrap the Canada carbon rebate. We are actually delivering money across the country to communities, to individuals, to small businesses, to indigenous communities to fight climate change and help afford their groceries. He wants to eliminate the carbon rebate. He wants to eliminate the plan to fight climate change. He has no plan for the future of the economy. Exactly. Mr. Speaker, Canada is first. Number one, the Liberals should be proud. Wait, but we're first in what? Air pollution, Mr. Speaker. For the first time, Canada is the most polluted country in North America. We're worse than the United States. When, with the climate crisis and forest fires, people are suffocating and choking. It makes them sick. People are dying. And it's only going to get worse. Is the Minister of the Environment proud to represent the most polluted country in North America? 
the Right Honourable Prime Minister. I understand this makes a nice clip, video clip for the NDP. We're talking about forest fires. Yes, last year, forest fires were horrendous. The truth is that we have to do even more to fight against climate change. But we have the Conservative Party that wants to take a step back on the fight against climate change. They want to uh, get rid of the rebates we're giving to Canadians. And the NDP never has had a plan when, uh, well, when we were we have been there with concrete action. We'll, we'll continue to be there to protect Canadians. The Honourable Member from Winnipeg Centre. Mr. Speaker, the Liberal government continues to fail women, including care workers in women's shelters. And the cuts to women's shelters have not only impacted women fleeing violence, but also shelter workers who are facing a burnout crisis, consistently overworked and underpaid. 75% of the care economy are women. This is a gender equality issue. Why does the so-called feminist Liberals stop wasting millions on private consultants and invest in fair wages for shelter workers to help save lives? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Uh, Mr. Speaker, we have demonstrated from day one that we are there to work with the provinces to invest in the care economy, whether it's commitments uh, to raise personal support worker wages to $25 an hour, whether it's our historic child care agreements uh, that are creating wa wage grids for early childhood educators, uh, whether it's moving forward on strengthening support for Indigenous communities and uh, care workers in Indigenous communities and from Indigenous communities, we will continue to be there. We recognize there is more work to do. But but we are there to do it hand in hand with the different jurisdictions across the country. The Honourable Member from Vaughan Woodbridge. Monsieur le Mr. Speaker, parents in my riding of Vaughan Woodbridge have been talking for years about what a hard time they're having finding daycare spaces for children. And that's why we put forward our early learning and child care bill, which the Conservative Party tried to delay. Can the Prime Minister update the House on the status of this important bill? The Right Honourable Prime Minister, Mr. Speaker, child care services are not only supports for parents but also for our economy. I'm so happy to see that with our support and the support of the member for Vaughan Woodridge in our caucus, the Early Learning and Child Care Bill in Canada received royal assent yesterday. Unfortunately, the Conservative leader asked his members to obstruct and share a delay this bill. But in spite of this, we are keeping our promise to Canadians so that no matter where they live, they will have access to affordable child care that is inclusive and quality, sir, quality service. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Prime Minister is not worth the cost to our economy. Uh, real per person GDP has grown slower in Canada than all the rest of the G7. Dead last. In fact, our per capita GDP is smaller than it was five years ago. The worst record since the Great Depression. And the parliamentary budget officer calculates that the carbon tax will blow an $18 billion hole in the size of our GDP, $1,000 in economic cost per family. If he really thinks that's worth the cost, why won't we have a carbon election? To yeah. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, at the same time, our population is growing faster uh, than other countries around the world, if you're going to be telling the full story. Uh, the reality is, Mr. Speaker, our price on pollution puts more money in the pockets of eight out of ten Canadian families in the backstop provinces. This is a fact recognized by the Parliamentary Budget Officer and recognized by Canadians who see both a real plan to invest in the jobs and careers of the future, the competitiveness that Canada needs, and the fight against climate change to keep us safe while putting more money in the pockets of Canadian families from coast to coast to coast. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. The government gets bigger, the people get poorer. After eight years, he's not worth the cost. He's blowing a, another $18 billion hole in our GDP with this carbon tax, a hole that will mean lower wages and a lower quality of life for the Canadian people. 
The Prime Minister now wants to quadruple the carbon tax, starting with his April Fool's Day hike. When will he realize that after eight years of Canadians lining up in food banks and living in tents, he's not worth the cost? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, the price on pollution returns every dollar that it collects to the jurisdictions in which it's connected, uh, collected. That is the fact that built our program, our fight against climate change. The reality is we're creating jobs, we're creating growth, and we're putting more money back in the pockets out of eight out of ten Canadian families in backstop provinces. This is the plan that fights climate change, builds a stronger economy, and supports Canadians right now with rebate checks that the Leader of the Opposition would cancel. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Based on the, his own main estimates and public accounts, he's collected over $20 billion in taxes and only returned $18 billion. So it is factually inaccurate to say that he's given every penny back. Right. In fact, uh, we know that in every single province where the carbon tax applies, Canadians pay more than they get back. And there is only one provincial party that supports the tax. The BC NDP is happily implementing this federally ma mandated tax grab. Will the Prime Minister today allow British Columbia to cancel the April Fool's Day tax hike? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, in a question and a contrast on facts, the reality is uh, the B.C. government has had a price on pollution since 2008, and the federal government has no involvement in British Columbia's price on pollution. Uh, it is a simple error of fact that the leader of the, Liber the Conservative Party is trying to share with this House. He must be mistaken. Maybe it's an honest mistake, uh, but the reality is uh, he is wrong on the fact on that, just like he's wrong on the fact uh, that he, he doesn't understand that 8 out of 10 Canadian families do better with the price on pollution. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Page 75 of the B.C. budget confirmed that they were bringing in the tax hike on April 1st because they're forced to by federal law. Yeah. And according to the Vancouver Sun, their, the NDP budget and fiscal plan presented in February says the carbon tax will raise $9 billion over three years. The New Democrats plan to give back $3.5 billion in climate action tax credits to low- and middle-income folks and spend the rest as they see fit. So will the Prime Minister end the carbon tax coalition with his provincial NDP BC counterparts so that, NDP, so that can, British Columbians can get their money back? Yeah. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. We can think that for someone who's been railing against our plan to fight climate change and put more money in people's pockets for months now, he'd actually have done his research to understand how it works. Every single province has the ability to put forward their own plan to fight climate change as long as it is sufficiently rigorous to be fair to the other provinces that are also doing the same. That's what a Canada-wide plan to fight climate change is all about. Yes, the federal backstop gives back more money directly to Canadians uh, in 8 out of 10 cases, but BC and others are free to do their own thing. The Honourable Member for Leader of the Bloc Québécois, Mr. Speaker, seated in the middle of some 100 Liberal MPs that risk losing their jobs, the Prime Minister keeps interfering into provincial jurisdiction with his drug farm care policy that we already have in Quebec, but he refuses to increase OAS. Another example, well, we're not municipal funds with their collective funds. Municipalities can do what they want. They're the government wants to impose its own choices. Can he talk to the 12 mayors of Charlebois, tell them that he'll take a step back and let them do their job? The Right Honourable Prime Minister, Mr. Speaker, the block leader is mistaken. We increased old, old age uh, funds for seniors that are 70 years of age or older because they know we have higher costs than others. Yes, we recognize that even in Quebec, Across the country, there are people who, who cannot pay for their medications for diabetes and their contraception because they're not covered. 
So we'll be here to work with Quebec to deliver for Canadians so that people can have their diabetes medications and their contraceptives. We'll be here to make sure people stay healthy. The Honourable Member for Ballet Chambly. I don't know if seniors use a lot of contraceptives, but I know in Quebec, diabetes drugs are covered. I also, he says, I don't know what I'm talking about. The collectivity fund, well, it should be up to the municipalities to do the work that they want. But the government that says it's trying, it seems to be putting money into housing and it's asking the municipalities to put money into housing, but can the government let the municipalities do what they want with their funding? The Right Honourable Prime Minister, Mr. Speaker, I think we do have challenges in terms of facts today. The Housing Accelerating Fund, Accelerator Fund across the country actually helps municipalities by helping create more housing faster, except in Quebec, where we gave the Quebec government $900 million that they added to another $900 million for municipalities across Quebec to create housing faster. We are here to work respecting jurisdiction in partnership with Quebec to help both small and large municipalities across the province. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. This Prime Minister's catch and release policies and his mismanagement of our ports. Car thefts have gone up by over 200 per cent in Toronto, 100 per cent in Montreal. There are 12,000 cars stolen in Canada's biggest city every single year. That is one car stolen every 40 minutes. Will the Prime Minister accept my common sense plan to scan every shipping container, reinforce our ports, and put career car thieves behind bars? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, cracking down on auto theft starts with going after organized crime. $121 million for Ontario to crack down on organized crime and car theft, and the Conservative Party voted against it. Ooh. Public Safety Minister announced $28 million for border services in collaboration with police across the country. And to stop organized crime, we're cracking down on money laundering, something the Conservative Party also voted, voted against. Right. We will take no lessons from the Conservative Party that chose to weaken our borders and pull money back from enforcement services any chance they got while they were in government. They did that. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. We pulled money back from back office bureaucracy and costly consultants that now chew up the budget. CBSA is now spending $60 million on a RIVE scam, while only five CBSA officers are, are monitoring 500,000 shipping containers at the port of Montreal. Conservatives put more CBSA agents on the front line at the port of Montreal and across the country. Won't he accept my common sense plan to cut back on the consultants and put boots on the ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd like to uh, ask the Honourable Member from New Westminster Burnery please to uh, allow the questions to be asked and for answers to be given without interruption. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. The Conservative government in which that leader was a minister cut hundreds if not thousands of positions in law enforcement across the country including CBSA officers and those back office experts who actually analyzed the, uh, the bills of lading and the origins to designate and to find out where these auto thefts are happening which containers have stolen vehicles in them we're investing in them we're giving more money so they can do their work uh, the the common sense is nonsense that the leader of the opposition is putting forward we know Leader of the Opposition. Well, why don't we just look at the CBSA's own numbers on this? In the first year of the Conservative government, there were a total of 12,673 CBSA's officers. In the last year, 
there were 14,113. I know the Prime Minister is not great with numbers, but 14,000 is bigger than 12,000, right? And by the way, if he wants to analyze what whether stolen cars are in shipping containers, why doesn't he accept my plan to scan those shipping containers? Wouldn't that be common sense? Yeah. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, I'll let uh, Mr. Uh, the Leader of the Opposition's high-priced high corporate lobbyist friends who give him so much money at fancy catch for access private events explain to him the impact on supply chains and shipping in Canada to try and scan 600,000 containers a day, Mr. Speaker. The fact is we are doing everything necessary to invest in countering organized crime, to track those containers and to do the work. He's not, he's, uh, he's not paying attention to the things that actually grow the country, even though he is listening to high price law. The Honourable Member from Calgary Skyview. Mr. Speaker, Calgary and my home province of Alberta is home to tens of thousands of proud Ukrainian Canadians. Since Russia's illegal war in Ukraine, Canada's commitment towards Ukraine has never been stronger, and it is why our government introduced a modernized Canada-Ukraine free trade agreement that President Zelensky asked for to be there to help Ukraine rebuild after they defeat Russia. Shamefully, the Conservative Party did not want to accept Ukraine's reasonable request for assistance. Can the Prime Minister update this House on this crucial trade agreement? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, after that Conservative leader turned his back on Ukrainians and forced his own caucus to do the same, he... Colleagues, order please. Uh, I'm going to ask the Prime Minister to start from the top. Mr. Speaker, after that Conservative leader turned his back on Ukrainians and forced his own caucus to do the same, he whipped his senators last night to vote against wow. the Canada-Ukraine Free Trade Agreement that Ukraine asked for. Our Liberal caucus, including the member for Calgary, Skyview, never backed down. Despite the Conservative Party's efforts to derail Ukraine's hopes to rebuilding after they win the war, the Canada-Ukraine Free Trade Agreement received royal assent last yeah, night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. The $60 million arrive scam is just the tip of the iceberg. We now learn that there are $5 million in additional fraud that has been identified by the Department of Public Procurement. And this is out of the $21 billion the Prime Minister is now spending on outside consultants, a 100 percent increase and fully with the support of the NDP. Can the Prime Minister tell us how much of this $21 billion is fraud? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. The situation is obviously unacceptable, which is why authorities are looking into this procurement process. Anyone who took advantage of our COVID response to save Canadian lives should face consequence. All federal contracts with these companies have been suspended as the investigation continues. But let everyone in this House notice how quickly he pivoted from a question on Ukraine. The reality is, Mr. Speaker, his members are ashamed of him for forcing him to vote against Ukrainian to remind uh, the Prime Minister, please, to make sure that questions and comments are directed through the Chair. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Pro Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister demonstrates once again he is a fake and he is a phony. Because he has... He has he's a fake and a... is 
a very experienced member of Parliament, and I know that he would uh, understand that that kind of a statement that directed to an individual would not be considered parliamentary. So I'll ask the uh, honourable member to continue with his question. Minister is a fake and a phony on this issue, just like on everything else. He sends. The Honourable Member, again, is a very experienced member, and he knows that when the Speaker asks him to, to chastise us a little bit for the use of language which is not considered parliamentary, I'd ask him, please, to rephrase, uh, with all those comments, rephrase the question without using those words. Mr. Speaker, this is a Prime Minister who authorized the export of gas turbines to pump gas from Putin's economy into Europe to fund the war. He's someone who signed on to allow Russian detonators to blow up Ukrainians on the battlefield, and he's a pro-energy a pro-Russia energy policy to fund the Russian economy. We'll take no less. Prime Minister. That is pretty weak sauce from the Leader of the Opposition. The reality is, Prime Minister, President Zelensky. I see that the, uh, I see that the, op the Opposition uh, House Leader is asking members uh, to be calm. I'm going to ask all House Leaders to please ask all of your members from all sides to be calm. So, uh, and I'll ask in particular, the member from, uh, from Dufferin Caledon, please, to uh, hold on until he has the time to speak. So, the Honourable Prime Minister, please. Mr. Speaker, the Leader of the Opposition is flailing in every way he can to try and divert the attention from the fact that his members voted against a request by President Zelensky himself to support a Canada-Ukraine free trade deal. The reality is his uh, constituents across the country feel betrayed by the Conservative Party voting against Ukraine. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. The, the Ukrainians asked for us to give missiles that conservative support to Ukraine, not to give turbines and detonators to Russia, which is what he has done. He has failed Ukrainians abroad, and he's failed Canadians at home. Canadians are good and decent people. They don't have to live this way. They do not have to give up the things they used to take for granted, like affordable food and homes, all for the incompetence and ego of one man. He is not worth the cost or the corruption. Will he call a carbon tax election so Canadians can decide? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, notice how desperate he is to try and find any excuse he can to justify their voting against Ukraine. And suddenly, he's not talking about the price on pollution that Ukraine put in itself years ago. He's not using that as an excuse, even though that was all we heard as a justification for why they voted against Ukraine, voted against Ukrainian Canadians, voted against the reconstruction of Ukraine that we are committed to through a free trade agreement. He stood in this House and voted against Ukraine and is now trying to do anything he can to hide from it. He let down Ukraine and that shows who he is.
The Honourable Member for Ottawa Vanier. Climate change is a reality that impacts my constituents in Ottawa Vanier. They have asked our, for our government to reduce emissions while putting more money back in their pockets. That is why every year they receive $1,120. I will just ask, well, we'll start again with 10 seconds for the question for the member for Ottawa Vanier, but I would like to ask the member for Jacques Cartier Pontneuf to retain himself while someone is um, asking a question. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. While Conservative politicians fail to recognize that climate change is real and that there is an even greater cost of inaction, can the Prime Minister inform Canadians why our plan is so important? Hear, hear. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, I thank the member for Ottawa Vanier for her important question and her hard work. The opposition leader would take away over $1,000 from families in Ontario every year. That amount might be minimal to him when he's cashing his CCB check, but not to middle-class families. But now we know why he wants to take money away from Canadians. He's in the pocket of big business. We learned from media reports that he was partying with oil lobbyists and CEOs at private Cash for Access fundraisers in Banff just last year. He cares about his wealthy donors getting richer. He doesn't care about Canadians. The Honourable Member from Nanaimo Ladysmith. Mr. Speaker, families in Nanaimo Ladysmith and across Canada should not have to worry about how to keep their kids fed while at school. A national school food program would make sure kids get the food they, they need to grow and learn. But the Liberals have been delaying for years. And what about the Conservatives? Well, they voted against feeding kids while putting the profits of CEOs first. Children should not be left to go hungry. Will the Prime Minister make sure a national school food program is in the spring budget? The right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, like all members in this House, uh, they're going to have to wait until October 16th, uh, sorry, April 16th uh, to find out what's in our budget. But I can give people a preview right now. There will be support on housing. There will be help on affordability for Canadians. There will be opportunities to invest in growing the economy and creating good jobs for the future while we help Canadians through tough times right now. We are focused on young people. We are focused on seniors. We're going to keep delivering, including by working with provinces on important programs like uh, school food programs. The Honourable Member from Kitchener Centre. Mr. Speaker, thanks to the powerful advocacy of people with disabilities across the country, every MP in this House supported legislation meant to lift people with disabilities out of poverty. Nine months later, still no commitment from this government to fund what will be called the Canada Disability Benefit. When it came to made legislation, this government sure moved fast to make sure people with disabilities could die well. Will the Prime Minister show he's ready to ensure Canadians with dis disabilities live well by committing to a fully funded benefit by Budget 2024. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, uh, the member is better than that question that he just asked. Uh, he knows uh, that it's really important to be there to both protect people uh, when they're most vulnerable and uh, be there to support their wishes. That is something that is foundational in Canada. In regards to people living with disabilities, we have uh, invested more in people with disabilities uh, over the past eight years than ever before, and there is more to do. We were very, very pleased to move forward on the Canada Disability Benefit, and we will have more to say in the coming months. It being 3.23, the House will now proceed to the taking...